Alright. This time on Fox can fix it. We're gonna put a new gas tank in my CJ5. It's over there now. Uh. So here's the gas tank we picked up. It's a stock 15 gallon replacement. I went to Rock Auto and just hit economy. Give me the cheapest one. And this is it. It does come with the lock ring and a new gasket and it's got like an epoxy coating on the outside. So this is already better than the stock tank, which was not coated and has a rust hole. Let me show you. So this is the underside of the Jeep. This is the gas tank. This is the skid plate for the gas tank. And I think it also helps retain the gas tank. We'll find out in a minute on that one, but you can clearly see where this tank leaks. What are you gonna do, you know? At least the tanks are still cheap. That one I got from Rock Auto, I think was uh, under 80 bucks. Hmm, not bad. So to get this gas tank out, we've got the bolts, well, very few, at least two on this end that hold the skid plate on. And there's probably at least, hopefully, two on the other half, possibly more, that hold it on. And then uh, we'll go from there. These are probably all gonna break, by the way. All right, there's not really enough room under here for me and the gas tank, so we're gonna favor the gas tank. But uh, there are one, two, three bolts that hold that in place. And right now I've got a jack supporting the tank. So once I take those out, we can just hopefully slowly lower that. Now, could you soak these down with PD blaster? Yes. Yes, you could. Did I? Well, no. Will I regret that? Maybe. Will I end up soaking them? Maybe. They're not gonna have a lot of time to soak. But well, maybe that'll help once the threads start moving. So, the best I can do. I've got all these bolts out right there. And now, you can see this tank is loose. I need to lower it down so I can get to the fuel hoses and the filler neck. Lowering. Okay, I think that's low enough down where I can get to these filler neck hoses, maybe? Oh, that's not even connected, so I don't have to worry about that one. There we go. Right, as you can see, both those filler neck hoses are off, the overflow and the regular, and now we just gotta work on the fuel lines. All right, hopefully you can see this, but there's only one line still attached. The vent line has been removed, and the top tank strap uh, is not bolted in and or broken. We'll try to fix that when we put everything back together. But I've got to get that one remaining hose on that other end. Over there, I've got to get that guy off. I think this is the ground for the tank strap. We're gonna take that off too. Looks like it's really grounded to a lot of rust. So uh, we're gonna need to clean that up anyways. There we go. All right, ground wire to go. Oh. Well, the socket came loose, that's for sure. There we go. Look at that. Unhooked. Perfect. That's still attached, but other than that, it's free. It feels like there's still a couple gallons in here. Which you never get all of it out. You get most of it. Come on down. Now we're free. And this top tank strap looks like it will go back into this hole it looks like just know we put the threads back on it last time somebody monkey with this tank all right that's cool we can deal with that here we go that's one disgusting tank oh good it's gonna separate all by itself finally finished that construction joke Uh, there you go. Easier than I thought it would be. So, the skid plate is actually the tank support platform bracket, whatever you want to call it. There is a bracket on each side. These are still in good shape. And then there's the top bracket, which is in perfectly good shape, but nobody bolted it in last time. It goes right there. So, I guess we'll clean all this up a little bit. Not too much because it's just not worth it. 
Then we'll put it all back together. See, this skid plate's got a lot of rust problems anyways, but it's still plenty strong. I don't have any rust proof paint right now, but I've got an engine enamel. That's gonna have to do. It's better than nothing. Maybe. tank drops right back in now i just need the setting unit as always if you got a handy use a brass punch to take these lock rings out if you can you don't really want to use steel if you don't have to just resort to screwdrivers. Oh. There's that leak we talked about. Apparently it's gotten bigger since we pulled this tank out. sending and it looks oh, well not terrible <sighs> yeah it'd probably actually function that's good you can see down the bottom of that tank there's a lot of rust and scale on the bottom of it anyways so it's probably good that we're switching it out because it's leaking because it's also rusty inside and upon even further investigation this tank was a known issue that was fixed the wrong way to begin with see this big hole that maybe somebody drilled in it. That was just covered up by this piece of Bondo. Maybe that's JB Weld, it's hard to say. But, you know, there was actually a physical hole drilled in the tank that they then patched. No wonder it had a leak. Don't do that. Now to reinstall the sending unit, it only goes one way. There's a tang right here and right here, and they're, they're offset from each other. They're not 180 across. So you can only put this on a specific way and have it drop down all the way. It's pretty easy. Make sure you put the square cut seal up underneath here, and then make sure you put the lock ring up on top like that. There we go, like that. The top of the tank has this nice high neck on it, so you know that your hoses need to come out this side anyways. But again, it will only line up the one way. We'll get that ring started, and then we'll tap it back in place. There we go. So we've got our upper tank strap bolted back on, even though it was not bolted on in the first place. I've got a brand new ground wire that we're going to run over. I've got another used piece of hose. It's not the same as the one I pulled off. Not at all. No, I'm not reusing the same one I pulled off. This is completely different. It just happens to be the same size and curve. But it does go through this armored little loop in the top of the tank like it's supposed to. The last one did not. I'm going to leave this capped off. This is our power wire to the sending unit. I'm going to leave these capped off because these went to a tank vent that does not exist, so those stay. Got to pull one more vent cap off of here. There we go. We're ready to go back in. All right, so it's been a couple hours, and after a couple long fights, a couple cuts, and uh, the reuse of some hose, but not all, we've got this gas tank back in. Let me show you. Here's the rear bolts right there. This is the tank strap on top that was missing from before, but now we have. There are the two fill hoses with new clamps. Both those hoses were still in pretty good shape, but the clamps were shot. And up front here, never mind those rust holes. You can see the tank strap and the bolts that hold this thing in. And on the driver's side, new ground wire, fuel line, and I hooked the tank back up to the gauge. And now we're stuck. Nope, we're not stuck. We're there you go, it wasn't pretty, but it's done. Now I've got a tank that doesn't leak because I haven't drilled a hole in it and tried to patch it with JB Weld, like whoever did this last. 
Unbelievable. All right, well, either way, still a pretty cheap fix. I did find some rust I didn't want to see, but we'll worry about that later. And uh, I'm gonna put gas in this thing and see if it starts. And well, until then, we'll see you next time.